The time has come for Holly Oates to celebrate its 18th birthday. And what better way to do it than to have an explosion? This week is going to be explosive, tearful and shocking. And there's only one way we can get ready for it here at Scratch Radio. And that is to talk to our favourite character, Steve Hay. Actor Kieran Richardson joins me now. Good afternoon, Kieran. Good afternoon, Johnny. How you doing, mate? I'm very well. I'm glad. So, what I want to do is, I want to know about, about you, and then what we're going to do is we'll then talk about this week's Holly Oaks, because this week's Holly Oaks is going to be amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's incredible. Um, I started in Holly Oaks uh, nearly eight years ago now, when it's ten years old, and the, the, the thought of actually thinking I would make it in the show to make it to its 18th birthday was just something that I never thought would happen, but to be actually here and involved in the week that's going on screen this week is just incredible. I know. Now let's let's start. Let's take it all the way back to when you were young. So, what actually got you into acting? Well, it's quite a topical story, a Hollyoaks topical story. But, uh, my dad used to be best friends with Will Miller, who first started off in Hollyoaks. And he used to come to my house all the time, and I was like, I want to be like you, Will. I want to fancy sound like you, Will. And then he gave me this number for an acting school in Manchester. And then six months later, I was in Hollyoaks. So I've been really, really lucky and fortunate. Um, so what was it like to join Hollyoaks eight years ago? Uh, well, it was funny because I was a viewer of the show. So then to come and sit in the green room, it was like sitting inside your TV. Hmm. It was very scary, intimidating, because I'd never done it. And be at the centre of it and the heart of the storylines is, uh, yeah. So, what have you noticed in terms of changes over the eight years? Because you've gone through various executive producers, so Brian Kirkwood was there, then it was Lucy Allen, and Kirkwood's back again. So what have you noticed? I think the most noticeable change for me and for the audience as well is, I say this in a lot of interviews, television itself has changed dramatically over the years. Um, Soaps used to be just kind of looking in on people's lives but nothing too exciting happening and you'd maybe follow one storyline that would have a big crescendo at the end but now because of big shows in america like breaking bad and all that people want to be kept on the edge of the seats and they want to see a twist every single episode and things just coming out of nowhere so the fact that us as a show have managed to keep up with that i think i think i think it's been really good and show that we are we're not behind with the times and we are keeping up with everyone else including great shows like breaking bad or whatever well, I think Hollyoaks especially is one of the most successful shows at doing that because we've had, I finally think off the top of my head, the twist, we've had Lindsay's, uh, Lindsay's death. The good thing about it, it's not just one story that will have this big explosive ending. It's loads of little stories that get bigger and bigger and bigger and then, then there'll be one big massive ending where all the stories kind of come together. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, which mm. is what you'll see this week in our special week for the 18th birthday. And in eight years, you've had loads of storylines, as we know. You know, you've been violent to Amy, your ex-girlfriend. You've had a relationship with Brendan. You've had yeah. the euthanasia of your mum, Pauline. What's been your favourite or most challenging role to kind of take these direction in? I think the most memorable and the one that will go down in history for me has got to be this Dean Brendan story because it was so massive and it had a huge impact with the audience. The fact that he left the show in March and even today people still tweet a message about that storyline. Why do you think that was that's... so successful though? Um, I think because if you stand the two characters together and the two backstories, they shouldn't really get on. And mm. it was all really down to the writing and the story team, what they created to put those two characters together and from the start to finish of the storyline. And what was it like to work with Emma through that time? Did you learn a lot from him? Yeah, well, obviously, when I first saw this big Irish guy with the dirty moustache <laughs> in his face, I was thinking, that wouldn't be Steve's boyfriend. That would, he would never fancy him. But then it's great the way the story unfolded, and now he turns out to be the love of his life. And what's the biggest notice you've, le- you've noticed in Steve himself over the eight years you've been playing him? Uh, got more popular. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say it's my boy's good looks and that I've aged really well. OK, so you're listening to the Johnny Seafoot Breakfast Show on Scratch Radio. I'm joined by Kieran Richardson, who plays Steve in Hollyoaks, and we're now going to talk about this week's episode. So, tell us about the house party that you and Doug throw in tonight's episode. So, I don't really want to give too much away, but basically, if you were watched last week, they will see that Trevor is getting involved in everybody's lives and trying <laughs> to ruin it and just trying to kill everybody. So, he has been taking secret pictures of Steve and Doug and the kids and threatening them because he doesn't want to do the drug dealing for him. So, it's kind of because of the week before that, Steve got released in prison, uh, Leah got. Lee went missing, so everything's just going wrong, 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 and they decide they can't take any more of Trevor, so they're going to run away from Hollyoaks for a little bit until he disappears. But that's not going to happen. They're not going to get very far. Oh, are you leaving this in the cliffhanger now? Yeah. Is that your well, we've got, we've got like a little hashtag going on Twitter called Hollyoaks the Blast. 
So that's probably a little innuendo there of what will actually happen. <laughs> okay, well, we know that your house is the one that's going to be blown up. What are you going to miss most about that house? Because you've been there for, you've been in that house for ages. You know, the decor's never changed. You were there with Amy. You've been there with Brendan. You're now there with Doug. What, are you going to miss that? Yeah, that's my house and not just because <laughs> of <it> carry <laughs> me as well. That That is where I've spent Monday to Friday for the past six or seven years bobbing in and out of that flat. So the fact that I'm not going to be able to do that anymore, it's quite sad. So, yeah, it's it's quite nice as well because Hollyoaks has been known for being so glamorous and some of the sets look great. The fact that you can go from a really nice-looking nice person, nice-looking set, and then you come to this horrendous sight with Steenish tracksuits. I like exactly. the difference. So, without giving too much away, what effect will the blast have on the rest of the village? It's quite cliche to say, but it will change everybody's lives. It will never be the same. Hollywood's Village will never be the same ever again after this week on screen. Because normally with, with a little stunt thing, it might only affect a few people, but this is going to rip the heart out of the show, which will be great to see the week after that then, to see how people are going to deal with the consequences of what happened this week. Well, I remember, uh, it was actually when I, th this is the actual reason I actually got into Hollyoaks all those years ago, was when the dog in the pond blew up. Um, and I remember Yeah, that, that was like week... nearly when I first started. I remember we watched it and it was, it was sensational what they did. And I think that was the turning point when everyone was took Hollyoaks seriously again. And then that was the year when we went to the Soap Awards and we won like six or seven awards and everyone was on a high. I, and I feel like if you look back now. at that and look at what we're doing now, that's how you see, like I was saying before, about the evolution television and how we've kept up with everybody else. Exactly, I completely agree with you. So, we know Danny Lomax is your father. Yes, what but he doesn't know it. What do you think of this twist? I think the best bit and the most bit that freaked me out was the fact that when Danny first appeared, Steve fancied him a little bit and Danny fancied a bit of Steve and they didn't know who <laughs> they were and they nearly slept with each other, which turned most people's stomachs inside out because it's horrendous and it should never ever happen so when when or if it does ever come out it's going to be great because there's going to be a lot of talking that's going to be needed with them that they nearly ended up in bed together <laughs> so how do you feel as kieran and then how do you feel as steve to have a new family to be integrated to if you survive the best thing about it for me is for years and years watching the show and being in it i've been so jealous that i wasn't a mcqueen i love a good family and they've been at the heart of the show for so long and they have some great storylines. They can do the dark stuff, the comedy stuff. So I've sat back and I've watched that going, oh, I wish Steve had a little family. And now it's happened, all my dreams have come true. But as in any soap or television programme, nothing's going to be rosy. And that's about your sisters, because it's not just Danny and his wife who've come in. You've also got three new sisters joining. Yes. Um, three new sisters that will, again, I don't want to give too much away. If every sister's completely different, so all relationships aren't going to be sweet. No matter what happens this week on screen, the sisters are definitely going to make an impact. And in their very first episode that they appear, they're not eased in gently, they're thrown in the deep end. Wow. I love these teasers you're giving. <laughs> no, I'm trying to like not give too much away. I've literally just stayed away bit. from spoilers. I'm so excited. I literally can't tell you how excited I am. Okay, so we've had some tweets come in for you. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've seen your Twitter's gone mental today. My Twitter's gone mental. I've never had that many tweets in a day. We have the most loyal fans ever this show. I love them. Do your fans call you anything? You know how like Lady Gaga calls her fans the monsters. Do they call you anything? Uh, they just call me Steve. Even though my character's called Steve, they'll call him Steve, but I love it, I secretly love it. <laughs> okay, so, at Holly underscore X wants to know if there's anyone you'd want to have more scenes with. Um, see, I know all my fans properly. Holly underscore X, she's a little blondie. I remember her bare profile picture. <laughs> Is there anybody I want more scenes with? Um, I always say this, it's Ashley Taylor Dawson. He's doing Strictly right now and he's doing really well, but he's also beautiful. So probably not watching him, I've always had a little crush on him and now I should have a dressing room with him and I just want to be on set with him every single day to look at him. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of talc and powder being thrown about and looking <laughs> to each other's bodies. Have you been helping him with his Strictly Come Dancing? I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not a very good dancer at all. He doesn't need any help off me. But you're a good ice dancer. You did the uh, Dancing on Ice couple of years. It was more skating though, I didn't really... My dancing bit was awful, as Jason Gardner told me. Every <laughs> single Sunday. Okay, so at Bolin underscore girl. She wants to know if there's any cat you'd want to be 
been brought back? If there was any character I would want to be brought back to the show, I would say it would be... Who was the sister that played the Dean sister? And she was beautiful. She was uh, stunning. Uh, Jodie Albert goes uh, out with the Westlife boy, Kian. Kian I remember, yeah. I remember she's married to him, that's it. I remember looking at her thinking, you are just one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my whole entire life. And then she wasn't here then when I came, so I couldn't Yeah, really did she leave her. just before you got there? Yeah. And is there anyone else you'd like to act alongside as a male, uh, as another male? Uh, I just, I know, just Ashley Taylor Dawson. Just Ashley Taylor Dawson? Yeah. Okay, and at Vicket, Smiley Face wants to know who makes you laugh on set? I know her as well. She's blonde. She's called Vicky Council, and she's from Bristol. So you know what I'm about. <laughs> she amazing. wants to know what? Sorry. She wants to know who, you, who makes you laugh most on set. Who makes me laugh most on set? This is the easiest question ever. It's got to be Stephanie Davis. She isn't your average human being. That's <laughs> the only way that I can describe her. She's great. The fact that she can have you in hysterics, but as soon as you shout action, she can be doing the most tearful, upsetting scene in the world, and you don't. You think, how, how the hell have you just got from laughing your head off to that in point not of a second? We are very supportive of each other, and we always say it's a bit like being in college or in school, because when you go and film a scene, it's like you're going to do a lecture or a class, and the director will be a teacher, and then all oh, your castmates are like your schoolmates. So, yeah, we are one big happy family. Okay. At Andrew Spencer, 93, do you know him? Andrew Spencer, Andrew Spencer, not off the top of my head. Don't no. Andrew Spencer. Okay. Who would like to know what you what would you like to do next with Steve if he survives? Where would you like to take him next? Um, if Steve was to survive in this week's episode, what would I want him to do next? I would want him to smile a little bit more because he doesn't get to smile that often. Um, so maybe some more scenes with Sinead and then have a secret relationship with Darren Osborne <laughs> and then pretend he's pregnant with the baby, just like Sienna. And does Tony not come back into it? You don't turn to be your father and it turns out Tony and Darren's, uh, Tony was your um, egg donor, not Danny or something. Like a secret love child or something, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and the final tweet is from at Tomorrow Lewis 1. Do you know tomorrow? No. Oh, what's going on? You know. But I love you, Tamara Lewis, whoever you are. <laughs> she wants to know if there's any other type of drama you'd like to try your hands at. Uh, any other type of drama I would like to try my hands at. Right. I used to always say Benny Dorn, but I think they can take a run and jump now. I don't want to be in that one because I beg too much and they just don't want me. So I would say if I wanted to do any other drama in the whole wide world, it would be. Um, what do I love the most? Maybe Downton Abbey, but I don't want, want to be one of the posh ones. I want to be one of the servants that work downstairs. So you want to be a servant or you wanted to originally be in Benidorm? Yeah, so there's a big difference big there different. from Benidorm big to difference. Downton Abbey. <laughs> okay, amazing. Okay, so don't forget to watch my notes all this week at 6.30 on Channel 4 or get a first look on Eve at 7pm to see the spectacular blast. I cannot wait. Scratch Radio.